My name is Maria Coriel Martin, and I'm the founder of Art Toolkit. Today, I invite you to join me to paint skies from clear skies to sunrise sunset skies and moody skies. I want to show you a little fun palette we put together that focuses on some of our favorite blues and has some extra little colors with some warms and neutrals to really extend the range of mixing. So we start by having a beautiful cool blue, cobalt teal blue. These are all Daniel Smith. And the next one is ultramarine. And ultramarine is a beautiful warmer blue. It veers on more purplish. Uh, you can also get some nice granulation with this color, which means that the pigments will settle into kind of little textures on your paper. Same with cobalt teal blue. And finally, our last standard pan of color is Indenthrone Blue, which is one of my favorite deeper blues that really can represent some of the nice night skies. Next in our palette, we move down to our mini pans. And here's one of our warm colors, a Hansa Yellow Medium. We might use this for sunset skies and for mixes or sunrise, of course. Another warm color, we have quinacridone rose. And this is a really beautiful pink that can mix nice clean purples and uh, also oranges and reds when mixed with the Hansa yellow medium. Another favorite blue, a cerulean chromium. And this one, it's a little bit cool, but a little darker than that cobalt teal blue. Also get some granulation. This is one of my go-to blues. I have this in every palette. And just three more. This is a raw sienna, lovely kind of lighter brown hand. And this can be used for mixing grays. Um, well, you'll see it in the moody skies we explore and uh, can bring warmth to your skies. One of my favorite browns, Burnt Umber. You might use Burnt Sienna too, but Burnt Umber is one that I really love for mixing um, deep grays, especially with Indenthrone Blue or Ultramarine. And finally, just for fun, this is Lavender. And this is sort of a dusty purple that um, is a wonderful, for, a wonderful color for like directly painting into skies or mixing for some of those that soft, like foggy light or with your sunrises and sunsets. So now that we've swatched our colors, I wanna do just a couple little studies here to show you uh, some of the colors you might use for some different skies. So the first one will just be our clear day. And what you'll notice with skies on a clear day is when you look to the top of the sky above you, that's the zenith, you'll see a deeper, more purplish blue. Here I've started with ultramarine. You might even, on a real kind of bold day, see a little bit of Indenthrone. And this will come down and just to kind of go through our range of blues, your cerulean. And the sky will transition from that warmer blue to a cooler. So coming down closer to the horizon will shift all the way to something more along the lines of that cobalt teal blue and kind of blend these together. And sometimes at the horizon too, this is called atmospheric perspective as things get hazier and farther away. You might even see a little bit of that sienna, which you can just mix in really lightly with your blue for some nice subtle colors. So this range of cool, uh, excuse me, range from warm to cool blues will help bring depth to your skies and really represent that zenith all the way to the horizon. So now let's think about uh, some sunset or sunrise skies. And here you'll see a range going um, uh, from more of these like dusty purples and blues. We might start with a little Indian throne at the top, depending how dark you have. Dark of a dark the light is, and then transitioning down and starting to play with purples. We might mix in a purple with your Indian throne, bring in a little bit of ultramarine. You can see these nice purples. Might even bring in a little bit of that lavender. Love that soft mix. And then having fun transitioning to yellow. Yellow is an orange coming down. That's where we can use this bright punch 
of our Hansa yellow medium. Let's put a little touch more lavender in here. A nice range of skies. And finally, I want to think too about some moody gray skies. And something we'll explore um, in some studies in just a moment is how to paint this on a larger wash. But when I, as a rule of thumb, when I paint a gray sky, I love mixing them from a brown and a blue. And one brown and blue I'll be using is Indenthrone Blue and Raw Sienna. You can experiment with some other browns and blues as well, seeing how they layer and what they mix. So here we've got some of these mixing. You can mix them more softly or have more intense colors, or washed out or more intense. But you can see we've got a little bit of a range of grays, and this will give you a little bit more of a warmer gray. So as you experiment, you might try grays. Another favorite of mine is that burnt umber mixed with Indenthrone or ultramarine. So let's just see that here a moment with that ultramarine, just to give you something else to play with. Instead of burnt umber, you might have burnt sienna in your own palette. That's another really wonderful color for mixing some of these neutrals. Let's add in a little bit more brown here. You can really see that neutral giving us those deep grays. If it's too brown, add a little more blue. Too blue, add a little more brown. And if we want to cool it down, we could even bring in another cooler blue like cerulean or cobalt teal. So that's a little look at some of our cloud colors and we'll be moving next into doing some little thumbnail studies. I've gone ahead and prepped a few sheets of paper inspired by the Polaroid format. So this is approximately three and a half inches wide by four and a quarter tall. And I used a little bit of washi tape to mask off a square. I'm working on a little bit of gator board, a stiff uh, waterproof board so I can move my paper around. But this is totally optional. You can also just have loose leaf paper and draw a little bit of a square. When I think about painting skies, I like to think about letting the paint flow and letting them be abstract. Get in, do your painting, get out. Don't fuss over them uh, or fiddle too much. Just discover what the paint reveals. Um, I'll often pre-wet my paper, but this is optional on a scale this small. Um, here I'm also using a Rosemary R10 brush. It's a size eight round, which is a nice versatile brush um, because it's big enough to do small uh, washes such as this, but you've got the point for detail. When I do apply a little bit of water to my paper in advance, I am making sure the paper is just shiny. I don't have big puddles, and, um, and this will also mean that the paint will flow and not be um, too wet. I'm also using 140 pound watercolor paper, which is heavy enough to support a wash. So now I've prepped a little paint on my palette, and I'm gonna dive in, and with a clear sky, or a blue sky day, you might see some clouds and I love to just paint around those little cloudy areas. You see the paint is flowing on that wet paper. You might pick up your paper or your board and give it a little tilt. And here I can come down and have that transition to a little bit of that uh, cooler sky. And this comes together so fast. You might notice with clouds sometimes just a hint of a shadow at the base where I like to come in with a touch of rose. But again, we'll just keep this loose and fast. And I'm leaning towards having some more subtle colors on this day, but you can always go in and drop in a little bit of a heavier, bolder color, especially near that zenith, and then be sure to get out and let it dry. This time I'm going to dive in and do a quick sunrise sunset. So just as before, I might give the page a quick pre-wet and I'm going to play with my yellows first, pulling in some of that Hansa yellow medium. Here I might tilt the page a little as well. 
so that flows and whoop didn't get my paper completely wet but that's okay this will help work quickly so i've got some yellow on my paper and i'm going to shift now to adding in some pinks with that quinacridone rose Use the tip of my brush to get a little more control there. When I add another additional color, I make sure my brush isn't too wet. You might see me drying my brush here, and that'll mean the paint won't flow too wildly. It'll give me a little bit more control. And let's come in with a little bit of ultramarine blue at the top. Oh, and you can see that mixing on the paper, giving some fun colors. And this is where I should probably stop fiddling, but I just can't resist adding a little bit more just to have this really have some pop of color once it's dry. Do one more little round and I'm gonna add a little deep end and throne up at the top. And there's a nice blending of a sunset sky from some bluish purples down to some reds, oranges, and that bright, vibrant yellow. The final Little Sky thumbnail I want to complete today is just going to be a moody sky playing with that raw sienna and Indian throne blue. And for this one, I'm going to show colors mixing on the page. When you paint, you can mix colors on your palette or on the page. And sometimes on the page, there can just be some terrific organic mixing. So I'm going to start by letting the sienna flow. I've got some areas a little lighter, some a little darker. This is giving a nice background color, letting that flow from the top to the bottom. I'm not going too heavy with this, but it's going to be this underpainting for the Indian Throne. And I'll come in with Indian Throne. Painting skies, especially larger, it can help to have colors pre-mixed. You can see I didn't get this pre-mixed here, but just don't, just need a little bit of paint. And I'll flow that right on top. Flow that Indian Throne. I love the mixing that's happening. And I'm sort of wiggling my brush up and down to imply a little bit of cloud patterns and shadows. Remember, these can be so abstract skies and you can really see and enjoy the flow that you get with yours. And I might tilt my paper in some different directions. And then I'll get out and let the watercolor just do its thing. Having a moody sky. And as you paint other moody skies, you can play with having a cooler um, sort of overall tone playing with those different grays that we explored in the beginning, or warmer, or using this approach to paint your uh, sunsets and different types of clouds. So have fun with these approaches. Now that these are dry, there's always the option to go back and add a little layer of paint if you wanna make any adjustments, but I feel complete with these and I'm gonna do the fun part of taking the tape off. Removing tape, I always like to pull a little bit out and away and go slow. You may want to test tape with your paper because every paper is a little bit different so it doesn't tear it. And this little washi tape is coming off really smoothly. So here we've got our nice soft blue clear sky day. And oh, it's just so satisfying getting that crisp line. There's our first one. And let's look at our sunset. I can see maybe wanting to blend that together a little more, but still I'm satisfied with the vibrant colors. So let's pull off the tape. Our nice crisp edges. And our moody sky has dried. I love this variation of the clouds with that sienna and Indian throne blue. Whoops, that tape's under. Pull this one off, pull out and away.
And now that I've got the tape off, I see in my little Polaroid format, I have the perfect amount of space for notes. And with any sketch, I always encourage myself and others to add notes, to remember colors that were used, what you were observing. So I'll just set these aside and uh, start with our clear skies. My colors, I had that ultramarine, this cobalt teal blue, and then added in a little bit of lavender and quin rose. Here we've got our sunrise, sunset, fancy yellow medium. Sometimes I abbreviate plus quin rose. Lavender and ultramarine. And finally, our moody sky. And here, oh, I love how this has come together. We have raw sienna plus end and thrown blue. Thank you for joining me today to sketch skies. And I hope you had as much fun as I did creating these small thumbnails. Please keep in touch. We love seeing what you create. And I want to remind you to embrace practice, not perfection. Keep playing and exploring.